at the real beginning of it all, there were a series of murders that we didn't know were connected at the time. A deadly shooting in front of a grocery store in Montgomery County, and tonight police are asking a lot of questions. It was a terrifying time. It lasted three weeks, and everyone was changing the way they did things, the places that they went. We feel like we probably have a skilled shooter, uh, and, and that does heighten our concern. Ordinary people doing everyday things ambushed, shot, and killed as they went about their daily routine. This is a reminder that today all afternoon and evening activities are canceled. Students are to leave at dismissal in your cars and buses and go directly home. At the time, I had just become a mother to two young kids, a first grader and a third grader. And the terror in Maryland, D.C., and Virginia during that time especially after a, a, a child was shot. The latest attack happened this morning outside of a school in Bowie, Maryland. A 13-year-old boy was shot in the chest this time. He's in critical condition tonight. Kids stayed at home, stayed in school. No football practice, no after-school marching band, no play practice. Everybody went home very quickly and orderly at 2.10 this afternoon. I saw some people on their knees pumping gas into their car. It had everybody looking over their shoulder. I've never experienced any fear like that in my life because the fear wasn't so much just for myself anymore, which our job requires you to do that, but it was a fear for my children and it was an empathy to understand what every parent goes through in a situation like that, the fear for your children. People rearranged their life because of this going into grocery stores, running out with only the packages they could hold in their hands. You know, walking out of your car, being exposed in that parking lot as you went into that store, you were thinking about, is there a sniper here? Am I gonna be the next victim? It was horrifying. One person was shot to death in the parking lot of the Glenmont Shopping Center in Wheaton. My first inkling that something was terribly, terribly wrong was the night of the, the shooting at the Shoppers Food Warehouse. I remember being sent up there. During police know the victim. And the first thing you do as a reporter is you look around for witnesses. You look around, you talk to people, you know, who, who saw anything. You look and see, do police have a small group of people over there that they're talking to? Those are probably going to be witnesses, and maybe after they're done talking to the police, they'll talk to us. And there was no one. We talked to people who were in this very, very busy shopper's food warehouse parking lot, the type of place where people circle, looking for people to pull out so that they can take their space. And so, of course, everyone's noticing everything very, very closely. And the only thing, I found one person who saw the gentleman drop. And they thought he had died of a heart attack. He, they, he just spontaneously fell to the ground. And it was the strangest, strangest thing. I can generally find at a, at a crime scene someone who saw something, even if they don't want to talk on camera. And I remember having that conversation with the producer of the show as the night wore on that I, I honestly don't know what happened here. And uh, that the producer got a little, little I, I guess, annoyed with me and said, well, how are we going to be able to put anything on the news if we don't know what happened? And I said, well, the fact that someone was shot and we don't know what happened is news. And it was, it was. That was the beginning of, for us anyway, um, this, this just nightmare. A massive manhunt is underway right now for two suspects behind a string of deadly shootings in Montgomery County all in very public places at random, most in broad daylight, attacks without warning. There were six shootings at six different sites in a span of just 17 hours. Five people were killed. No motive, no suspect, no lookout. There was just bedlam out there. Cops didn't know what was going on. None of us knew what was going on. 
But I'll tell you something I noticed right off. Homicide detectives are normally um, natty dressers. You know, they're out of uniform, they're in civilian clothes. They take pride in the fact that they're detectives and wearing suits and in good clothes, not those uniforms. But I came upon the scene and I saw those homicide detectives in all their little clothes, fancy clothes, putting on flak vest because they didn't know where the next shot was coming from. That's when I knew we had something very serious on our hands. Jim, this sniper is becoming the king of cowardice, targeting unarmed, unsuspecting everyday people. Even journalists, you know, it had to cross your mind that could you be targeted by the sniper? They were shooting people just doing normal things, getting gas, going shopping, mowing a lawn. So what's to say anyone, even a journalist, uh, could be targeted uh, by these snipers? Fortunately, that didn't happen, but everyone lived with this sense of fear. Everyone has to go get gas. Everyone has to go get groceries. And so no one was really immune from the fear that happened. I remember one of the most striking images uh, was the tarp people would use at gas stations to hold up to shield people from a potential sniper. And you just imagine people living that way and, and not knowing who's going to be the next victim. It really was very concerning. When I would go to work and do my live shots in the morning, I would jump out of the truck, I would do my live shot very quickly, and then I would get immediately back into the truck. I wouldn't linger outside in the open because you were always thinking about is there a sniper around? I wouldn't wear uh, colorful clothes. I was wearing very muted clothes at that time period because I didn't want to stick out. I didn't want to be a target. We want to go back now to Chopper 4 and Darcy Spencer. She is over the shooting scene once again in Bowie. Darcy, what's the latest? Oh, well, good evening. It looks like they may be settling in for a long evening with this investigation at Benjamin Tasker Middle School in Bowie. I covered some of the scenes from the helicopter and the thing that kind of stands out to me is whenever there would be a shooting, you had to respond to that as if this could be another sniper shooting. We didn't know, of course, but there were so many different incidents happening and it wasn't just concentrated in Montgomery County. We had a teenager shot and wounded in Prince George's County. There were multiple shootings in Virginia. So I do remember going up in the helicopter over different scenes in different areas, and you had to pursue the story as if it may be the sniper, but also with that in mind that maybe it isn't. But as time went on and you look at the scenes and learn more information about the person, the innocent people who were shot, you quickly realize, yeah, this looks like this was the work of the snipers, but it did take the police getting in there and confirming that information. At one of the murder scenes, a witness saw a truck uh, speeding away. That truck's been described as a white box truck, sort of a, a delivery truck, an Isuzu-type truck with black lettering on the side and perhaps damage to the tailgate in the back. This morning and early this afternoon, scores of white uh, trucks fitting that description were stopped uh, by uh, police here in Montgomery County and police throughout the region. But police say they have not located the truck that they're looking for. That turned out to be a bogus lead that derailed part of this investigation early on. Profilers were stumped. Profilers who were supposed to know a lot about these things said, ah, it's a middle-aged white guy who has some military experience. And don't forget about that white box truck. Well, it turned out to be two black guys in a blue Chevy Caprice, and there was no white box truck in this case anywhere. Pat Collins is once again at the Montgomery County Police Headquarters in Rockville. Yeah. Pat? Yeah. Wendy, it's cold, it's damp, but I can tell you this is one of the best days in Montgomery County in the last few weeks. A great sense of relief out here. There are people bringing flowers to the police. Why? Two men in custody, potential suspects now in the sniper case. Eventually, investigators got some forensic evidence, they got some fingerprints, they got some DNA, and they got some tips, some tips, some from far away in Seattle, Washington, where these guys were from, that led them to Malveaux, which led them to Muhammad, which led them to the 
blue Caprice car, which then led to a lookout, which led to a national be on the lookout kind of campaign. And then at a truck stop up near Myersville, Maryland, there was a guy sitting there and looked over and he saw this blue Caprice car, saw that license plate from New Jersey, 911. And before you know it, it was Bookham Dano. And they had him. Federal County 911, fire ambulance or police. Uh, the 1990 blue Caprice that, the, that you all are looking for. Uh huh. They're sitting at the rest area, Route 70 westbound. Tonight, people in the Washington metropolitan region are breathing a collective sigh of relief. We now consider them suspects in the string of shootings in Maryland, Virginia, and the District of Columbia. And I remember the press conference where Doug Duncan, the county executive, and Chief Moose got up and announced that they had been taken into custody. And something that I absolutely never, ever do is to say what I said in that, that live shot, which is, I, I believe I said something to the effect of, it's finally over. Doreen, it's important to note that the two suspects arrested this morning have not yet been charged in the sniper murders. But the confirmation this evening of a ballistics link between the gun found and the majority of those murders leads to the feeling, the feeling that after three weeks, it is finally over. And um, that was, you know, I try not to be too personal. As, as a reporter, but I think it was something that we all felt, that we all felt that it was finally over because I feel like there was no social media then, or almost none. There were no security cameras. There were no, you know, busy shopping center, no security cameras. There was no one to verify, you know, the information about the white van and the other vehicle. and. And we had none of those things available to us. And I feel as if we, I, I wish that we had been able to do more to not let it go on as long as it did. But that feeling of knowing that it was finally over, that the two suspects were in custody was something that I will never, and never ever forget. The thing that sticks with you is those people were all completely innocent victims, shot and killed at random, and they left behind families that are still dealing with this 20 years later, interviewing a daughter, other family members, grandchildren who never got to meet their grandparent. It really has left a big hole in a lot of people's lives, and I just hope it's something that people don't forget.